Hello and welcome to episode 43 of Anne and Steve Talk Stuff, where an artist and an economist walk into a podcast and talk about strange things that make the world go round. I'm Anne Blake. I'm a performer, playwright, musician and a director in the theatrical sense. And Stephen, who are you? I'm Stephen Kinsler. I'm an economist at the University of Limerick. He's loads of other things, people. But we shall <laughs> we shall crack on. Um, because we, I, I, I'm concerned in a lovely way about uh, this episode we're about to do. That it's a very enriched one, and that that we might just run out of time. Um, and if you are watching the video, because I'm sorry to say, Stephen, our houses are 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 filmed and people can see us. I am wearing Pride colours. I know Pride Month was June, but technically Lyric Pride is this month. So, hey. It's always nice to wear a rainbow. Um, but yeah, we decided that uh, it was something that came up in a previous podcast that you said, and it was that we would um, look at the lyrics of Neil Hannon, who's also known as the Divine Comedy. And he has so many other musical acts and, and things that he does, but uh, we, we're focusing on the Divine Comedy. And I have to say, it was a lot of fun preparing for this episode. Yeah, I um, I spent basically the whole weekend just listening to the Divine Comedy, just just from from uh, the '93 Liberation album all the way up to the latest stuff. Um, listen to the soundtrack stuff that he's done. Um, you know, most people actually don't really know that they know his work because he did the theme June to Father Ted, <laughs> right? So, so the people are like, doo, 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 doo. that's him. And, you know, there's, there's loads and loads of little bits and pieces of music. So um, if you've, if you listen to, uh, if you've watched the film Amelie, you might know the Jan Tiersen refrain, um, but uh, all of the other music actually is Neil Hannon's. You know, and the, the, like, there's just, there's just the guy is uh, the guy's work is amazing, and um, particularly, I guess, if you're like mid thirties to mid forties, he was kind of unescapable as an artistic sort of voice. As yeah, uh, and he, uh, he managed to really deftly sidestep the nonsense that was Britpop. Could have very easily you know, wrapped him right up and spat him out, but he just kind of, he was too, um, he was too wonderful uh, to to be caught up in this kind of Blur versus Oasis um, stuff. By the way, uh, I'm like uh, Blur versus Oasis. I'm not remotely answering that question. That's in the past and Ooh. I, it was a terrible Ooh. time and I don't want, this is about Neil Hannon. Let's stay for happy yeah. memories. I it agree. was a stupid media war and it just, I yeah. can't believe we're still having it. So And the answer... I'm, the answer is pulp. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. I like it. Both those bands. Controversial. Uh, controversial. controversial. No, uh, I love it. Uh, yeah, no, it's funny. It's funny. Just preparing for this as well. Like Neil Hannon, looking at him. Uh, you know, he was born in 1970, and he, which means he hit, um, he hit 50 last year. Yeah. But I mean, the man. When I discovered him pretty much when the albums were coming out, like Liberation, Promenade, um, Casanova, they were the ones that I was very familiar with because mm. I was a teenager and they were coming out. But he was like making those when he was 23, 24, yeah. 25. And there's the sophistication of them and the arrangement musically aside, like just that stuff was just incredible. Yeah. And, um, you know, his knowledge... Um, of 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 even cultural references and that was mm. you know it's a bit tongue in cheek and he'd often be kind of bluffing a bit but uh you know to be the age he is now and have this much done and still like he's kind of he probably should have been 50 when he was making his work at the beginning <laughs> you know what I mean? he was yeah. kind of an old soul but uh he's 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 um he had a very big and i think it's kind of came out of a conversation we'd had which is like this for me and I think we're probably a little different in this like this was what I was listening to when I was a teenager um uh -huh. when everyone else was you know getting Metallica. in touch okay yeah, yeah. <laughs> when everyone else was getting in touch with their inner kind of 
angst I was listening to to Neil Hannon who was very happy and and kind of bright and uh uh, you know I I say very and we're not going down this rabbit hole but you know in our day we had uh teenage angst which was nice and kind of performative Mm. whereas now unfortunately we have teenage anxiety which is a very real a terrible thing but anyway we're not going down that rabbit hole um because this today is about Mr Hannon and and lyrics so he obviously is an amazing musician but what you what you decided and what we did a bit of a call out on twitter um and that we've got a great response yeah of thank you people th- thank you all thank for you that. to everyone for doing this <laughs> um for for well, i mean i i find i have a slight issue with, with the word favorite because it's so reductive but i suppose it's a handy one to get people talking but when people talk about their favorite you know hand lyrics and there's a lot came through but you put you got the ball rolling Stephen, with with your own favorite uh, are the one you, that you chose to start the ball rolling, which was um, a lady of a certain age. Yes, yes. Um, um, can you give, so, give us the lyrics? So, what's fantastic about a lady of a certain age is he, he starts he starts by saying, you know, back in the day, you were you you had been part of the smart set, you know, and he sort of he sort of gives you this. He immediately introduces you to this notion of of past right that this person is in the past that their that their life is in some sense happen has happened you know Mm -hmm. and then you know you're scaling the dizzy heights of high society armed only with a checkbook and a family tree right and then they go on he goes on to basically excoriate this person and everything she was and and then I, I think um my favorite line I've listened to this song probably 10 times since Friday it's now Monday when we're recording this and I think the best line of the whole song is your husband's hollow heart gave out on Christmas day he left the villa to his mistress in Marseille you know and now you come here to escape your little flat hoping someone will buy you drinks and let you chat I mean it's just ah, the compression involved is is extraordinary your husband's hollow heart gave out on Christmas day he left the villa to his mistress in Marseille I mean that's that's a life in 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 the couplet like it's amazing you know and I think um you start off and you're aware that he because I think when you when you talk certainly when you sing about the elderly or when things have passed is it tended to get mawkish and nostalgic and a little bit kind of mm, where things were better in the past the way it starts it starts as very simple guitar you know and then there's a word in it at the very end of that um, couplet that i described um where he says and now you come here to escape your little flat right and it's kind of a vicious wood flat mm. and you realize that he's not happy with her at all and, and once you listen to the lyrics in the slightest you've realized oh my god this woman's lived a very selfish life and she's mm. given birth to two very selfish kids who can't be arsed to deal with her and um she lives entirely in the past in her past you know which was obviously lovely like you know she had you know holidayed with kings and dined out with starlets so she'd had a fantastic life but now living living it entirely in her memories and i used to know people who were precisely like this mm-hmm. not in the sense that they'd you know uh you know had had dinner with them dinner with kings and all that more than i i knew people who had for for one one way or another had had a remarkable past yeah and then had spent the rest of their time more or less living through that past and so their present was quite a withered thing because they were never really able to get past that um that person that they were and they didn't really want to so you know they would wear the old clothes um like like uh like uh, that this is in the 80s there was a guy who used to he used to go to the the pub that i used to work in um and he uh he was like decked to the gills in 70s gear yeah like like and I don't mean like Sideshow or not, or not Sideshow Bob. What, what's the guy from The Simpsons? Disco Stu. 
Okay. Right? <laughs> yeah, he wasn't like Disco Stu, right? He didn't have like the stupid 1970s staying alive stuff. He just yeah. had like a leather jacket and like a denim jacket underneath the leather jacket. And the mm. hair was like ridiculous for the 80s, you know? But he'd been a really, really big deal in in the 80s or in the 70s, in the early 70s in Dublin. And, and sort of a, yeah. And he, he, you could just tell like that he was, not only did he, he, he literally was yesterday's man you yes. know and yeah. i i think when you certainly when you work in pubs and bars you meet lots of people like this because they're lonely yes. and they come to be relieved of their loneliness and talk and oftentimes as the barman particularly on a day where there's not a lot going on you feck all else to do but listen to them and they kind of know that and um because i was a lot younger than them mm. they kind of it was weird. I would always find they would do this kind of advice thing with me. They would be like, what you need to do now is, and I was like, what I need to do is not end up like you in my head going, you're like, a, yeah. But every time I hear this song, what actually happens to me is I see those people mm. and they rotate in a carousel around my mind. And, and it's remarkable. <laughs> one lady, one lady in particular, she's, she's, she is this woman like in, 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 you know, in so many respects. And for her, and for her, what I, what I always remember about her was she was a raging alcoholic, absolutely raging. But she'd rock up and she'd have about six gin and tonics, you know, all doubles. And then she'd come up for gin and tonic number six and she'd be like, no lemon, darling. And i go, why? Why do you not want any lemon? And she'd go, it gives me hangovers. Oh, I love it. <laughs> like, you're so, it. there's, but then you have to remember there's a style, right? There's a coolness to these people. And they are all cool because they were once cool and they still yeah. retain that kind of pride. And like fundamentally, uh, I am many things and like, but I'm not cool. And I've always <laughs> thought, I've always thought that they were way cooler than me and always would be. Yeah. And I, I, uh, a little bit of me envied them that. And, but I've always thought that this song, this song for me gets so much of that right. Yeah. You know? Um, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think what you said there about like how he he gets so much in so little. There's a real economy of um, mm. expression, and he like not only like, there's only things with lyrics. They need to sound pleasant. They need to they need to yeah. to work uh, like lyrically and audibly. They need to be nice on your ear. Yeah. But when you can do that and get a load across, uh, yeah. it's it's what it's what it's what he does so well. Um, I picked out. Um, in a very different way this is this is a very bittersweet very beautiful song like i think you could do an entire podcast on this one song and it's uh, your daddy's car ah amazing which is on um oh god it's it's on promenade isn't it, it yes. I, hang on yes. hang on hang on got to get this right double check that okay so I've, while you're checking yeah. that i i <laughs> do know all these things no no but um, you've just listened to every single one that's it songs. actually no i do think it is liberation remember. i think it is his uh, first album liberation which is 93 so uh there's two two there's a few i picked out a few bits from the song the whole song is gorgeous and very 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 kind of tragic um and the first part is and then when we got tired and it got dark we found a place to park and we watched the sunset fire to the sea. And just that description of a yeah. sunset always like, just caught me. Yeah. And and then the, the chorus of it. So the, old, the whole idea is these these two people taking like we took your daddy's car and uh, and and then the chorus is, can you feel the sadness in our love? It's the only kind we're worthy of. Can you feel the madness in our hearts as the key turns and the engine starts? And reading this, it it doesn't really it it does do some justice to it, but you know, obviously, there's the way he sings it, and what this is a podcast, so we aren't necessarily playing clips, but we are giving you all these recommendations to listen, and I would recommend to listen. But there's such like just there's it's so sweet and so dark, um, yeah, and then heads to a very kind of sad conclusion later on at the the last part of it. It goes. We took your daddy's car and wrapped it round a tree. We didn't know what far. We didn't feel like driving anymore. It was so good we got bored 
and we are driving from the day we are born. Yeah. And I used to listen to this song and think it's so sweet. It's going to be took your daddy's car. Really sweet and fun. And then you start to, you know, and I was listening to yeah. it as a young person. I'm like, oh, yeah, it's kind of cute and whatever. And then you go, maybe my 20s. I was like, wait a second. This is about <laughs> two people deliberately crashing the car. And then, you know, when we're driving from the day we were born. Think like, of the it? insurance premium. <laughs> but I, I, it's highly irresponsible. <laughs> it's one of those songs that really improves with age, you know, yeah. but has a gorgeous real musical hook. And as a, we're talking about kind of lyrics today, but like the music is incredible. And I don't know, did you ever know that song or had you would you be familiar with that one? Yeah, I think I think what I what I what I really, really like is, you know, how how they they got this. Um, I, I can see it. I can actually see it in my mind. And what I see in my mind is this is this um, is this sort of like madness, it's kind of joyous madness where they rock into a bar and then they, you know, they 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 grab like a, a giant bottle of champagne, you know, and they're like, yes, this is amazing, you know, and and uh, and they're they're driving along, drinking the champagne, and and they're going, God bless this car and all her sail in her, you know, and 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 then they're and then you're kind of thinking, oh my God, you know, champagne and ships, like, you know, <laughs> yeah. this is not great this is not going well like there's a there's a darkness to it um the way that it, it's set the way that the music as well it's like it's almost like do 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 you know it's like there's, there's a real like you could almost imagine a ferris ride going a little bit faster than it maybe is safe for the children to be sitting on the horse and, like, da, 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 da. and yeah, the guy yeah. operating is like this is gonna go wrong folks you know and there is a certain manic kind of uh, sadness in it and you wonder or is this couple breaking up like you know did they do they kind of know that it's over and they just go feck it and just go for, go on the absolute lash one more time mm. you know and i've often seen that happen um you know people people rather than letting it peter out people just go absolutely mental and just go right that's that you know i'm taking the cat i'll see you later you know, yeah. <laughs> i i think as well it's so as well when you're cds with... are mine you know? <laughs> well yeah but like dealing with something as well so like like tender and fragile and yeah. and and taboo and yeah. and dealing with it in such a very um he kind of hoodwinks you you know you're like oh this fun yeah. song they're they're on the lash they're having the crack they're they're kissing they're having a great time and then it's um and it's dark ending and but i think he doesn't it's not cheap he doesn't uh, no. go and now i'm going to you know and now i'm going to use uh suicide in this awful way like it's it's very if anything it's um i, I think it's it's handled very kind of beautifully and um yeah i think as i said i think the song possibly deserves its entire own podcast because it's just um, there's so much going on in the song. There's so much going on in it, and mm. and yeah, and even I just love that we didn't feel like driving anymore, and and we are driving from the day we are born, and you know, suddenly yeah. it's like he just it gets, starts. It gets deep really quickly, really and quick, in, like, Neil. Super poppy way. Yeah. <laughs> Go easy on us. You know the other, but... you know the other person, the other, the only other artist who really does that with like super economy of words. She's a brilliant. I don't know. Is she Swedish or Danish? Her name is Robin. Oh yeah. And she started off in this like super poppy thing, and she's since like I, I have to listen to her stuff, but like the whole album through. I'm right. not happy. I'm not happy just listening to a single single thing. She has these orchestral versions of her songs, and they're absolutely superb. But her big, big, big song is called "Dancing on My Own." Dancing on and my own. I think own. it's only like 70, 70 words or something. Yeah. Like it's it. The economy of the thing is amazing, and it's mm. just I, I can recall being at a wedding, and and a friend of mine had been married two years previously and his marriage was falling apart and he was dancing to this song dancing on my own and he was just kind of dancing with me and he was smiling and he was crying and I was like we just need to get you off this 
<laughs> dance floor really quickly, <laughs> buddy, because you're about to like freak out. And you know, you've been at dances with this, and you know, you've been in you've been in exactly this situation, I'm sure. Uh, not exactly, but something like this, you know, mm. where you're just like, my mate, he would have crashed the car into the tree that night. Do you know what I mean? Mm. Which it would have just been a bit of a mental one. Yeah. Um, and uh I can remember just being like, you know, like like just sort of very like signaling to my wife is very empathetic kind of person she sort of gets the what the vibe of what's going on very quickly you yeah know? and she kind of she was like chatting away and I was like you know making a silly <laughs> silly face and everyone thought oh there's Steve just really bad dancer but I was really like calling for help and she kind of was like what do you want you girl and then she looked at me she looked at my friend whose name I won't mention and yeah. she just kind of went oh you could see her go click 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 like they all all the lego bricks just clicked yes. and she was like she was like, I'll be right back. And she just went straight over. We just kind of grabbed him. He, he's, him. He's, he's, he's done a full Robin. We've got to yeah, do something. No, no, no. He's gone 60% Robin. Grab yeah. him. But no, it's, I, think, I think it's that. It's that kind of like, you know, that energy. Uh, actually yeah, I, i'm gonna cheat yeah. one la one extra little one in here before i go back to you because um i just this one grabbed me and i think it's because i knew i'd be doing this episode with you of course um and it's just a line from europop which is also from liberation and it's just it opens with the words financial gain is a very pleasant thing the transitory pleasures that it brings count for nothing i thought i just think it's fun to say that to an economist yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and in fact, in, in um, some, some 20 plus years later, in uh, the absolutely superb 2010 Bang Goes the Knighthood, he has a fantastic song called The Complete Banker, right? Um, and it starts off, can anyone lend me 10 billion quid? Why do you look so glum? Was it something I did? You know, so I caused a, a second Great Depression. What can I say? I guess I got a little carried away, you know, um, you know, uh, and then he kind of goes, um, it's a bit angry. It's maybe too angry. Mm -hmm. But uh, uh, but there, there's a fun, the way it goes is like, da, 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 da. And it's kind of like again, it's kind of a merry-go-round show tune that you're supposed to you're, sp you're not supposed to respect this dude too much. You mm -hmm. know, I loved it making a I loved it making a profit from somebody's loss. I never knew exactly whose money it was, and I did not care as long as there was lots and lots for me. You know, I mean, yeah. I mean, in 2010, like every song was an anti-capitalist song, but yeah. You can see the themes are just there, you know. It's sure. and it is funny, I think, because you know, there's the kind of the fun of his younger writing because he was he was young and he hadn't yeah, you know, he was a son of a a, a reverend. He grew up in Northern Ireland and in Eskillen. And mm -hmm. you know, you can see you can see in in his like youth how he's just having fun. He's talking about things he doesn't know. And even like that with your daddy's car, I do think He's not being glib about yeah, things, yeah. but there is a big difference between that writing something in your twenties and then writing something in your forties, which is is what you know you're you're quoting there. He would have been, um, he would have been just turned forty, like mate, writing writing Bangles yeah. Knighthood. But yeah. Uh, yeah, and he's and it's a callback to financial, you know, to Europop. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Um, it's funny actually when when you talk about you keep talking about merry go rounds because he has a song on um, Promenade, and it's just it's so Promenade's a concept album, and the entire yeah. album is a one day and it's a couple and it starts with a bath in the morning and it ends with tonight we fly Richard yeah, you know fly. and it's it's just beautiful and it's this idea just these two people throughout a day in a very kind of non-didactic obvious like oh we're obviously on a day it's kind of as you listen to it you, you, there's a lot of layers going on yeah but there's this idea of they're, they're on a date on a on a ferris wheel and basically at the end they get um so I'll, I'll leave I'll just say what happens at the end so the the the, the, the ferris wheel is turning and he's very nervous and then like you hold on to my hand and you know makes it easier and then at the end it, it everything kind of slows down mm. and the line goes we get the feeling that we're not alone in this and then a god who really ought not to exist sticks out a great big hand and grabs me by the wrist right and so and then basically god says and ask me why and i say well god it's like this and he goes on this big rant about you know how crap god is basically yeah. and then yeah. the end of the rant is 
So this is a bit of a long one. He goes, and to be frank, I find that life has more appeal without a driver who's asleep behind the wheel. (laughs) And then he goes into this. This is the end of it. He goes, then God decides that he has taken quite enough of all this atheistic tosh and I'm spouting off. And so he calls upon his favorite angel choir to sing of times when men were filled with Christian fire. But overzealous angels flap their wings too fast and cause the wind to blow and turn the wheel at last. And soon my feet are safely back on solid ground and then I hear a voice say don't look down <laughs> I mean come on like come on you and know, it's actually it's actually Roald yeah. Dahl like kind of rhythm isn't it yeah, that kind of yeah, those yeah. you know those poems yeah. in the Roald Dahl books they you have know, that kind of I meter I but I so just much. I love that idea of like God at the top of the first wheel like going well actually I think you're crap sick of your nonsense lad shut up <laughs> and, the, and the angel wings <laughs> flap and start the first wheel going again like I suppose this is so silly and 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 imaginative and magical and kind of stupid and and clever as fuck like you know um like there's so much going on in it even though it's as i said it's one of the lo- it's it's a very long uh, bit of a song for me to to pick because he's actually ta- he talks it you know um mm. but i've i just always really enjoyed the actual kind of poet it was like kind of listening to someone telling you a story you know yeah 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 and you get you get all of that from from many of his lyrics actually that that he has a mental image of what's happening, you know. Um, and I, I, we we picked a couple out, but um, Frog Princess is perfectly like that, you know. And it starts off as kind of a lament, and then then you realize that he's just solid taking the piss, right? Yes. Um, and it's got this it's got this really kind of sad piano. Dun, 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 dun. And then he's, you know, and it, Actually, it's it starts with like, the it starts with the Marseillaise. Da, da, yes, it is, which yeah. prefigures precisely what I'm going to talk about, right? So he's going, you know, and yes, I do regret it now, but how was I to know that just one kiss could turn my frog into a cow, you know? And then he goes, and now I'm rid of her. I must confess to thinking about what might have been, and I can. And he always goes, I visualize like that. Yeah. My frog princess beneath a shining guillotine and then there's this this big like do 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 and the entire thing stops as you hear a guillotine fall and then you just <laughs> keep singing the song and you're like yes and you're kind of like you're delighted that this has happened it's 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 fantastic because it's like it's a perfect breakup song right it's a perfect like yeah yeah you know you're angry at somebody and you're like yeah yeah i'm sick of you yeah chop your head off brown move on and i think everyone has their frog princess oh oh all all of the all the above all the above right we've all got that and i think he does that as well which is kind of like a cool anger Mm -hmm. you know like he's he's clearly angry at lots of things but he doesn't turn it into a rant he makes it funny and kind of cool and very like you 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 get a sense that the only way that you are cutting this frog cow princess person is in like a three piece suit that was cut by hawks of Savile Row. Like you're gonna look fantastic when you're murdering this person, like because you have to have style when you're doing it. Like it's that yes. kind of a, it's that kind of a of a tune, you know. Um, yeah. He he is associated. I have to say, is associated like all of his art. He's always quite suited. He's very like you get the sense that everything he's trying to do is to maybe give you a sense of how much control he has because he's you know wearing this sort of you know simple black and white power suits basically for half of his career i think he's kind of given it up now a little bit although in office politics which is his latest album he actually shows up in a suit but it's like a like a drudgy 1970s suit now, which is very interesting yeah a choice right because well, they were think, very sharp before i think it's very important though as an artist that you don't feel like i i do this thing and now i can do nothing else do you know yeah he did have a bit of a misfire i won't focus on it but in 2001 he had an album called regeneration where he tried to kind of move away from yeah, the suit yeah. and he went tried to wear t-shirts and, and things we won't talk about that um because <laughs> let us not speak of this <laughs> well no that's not what the, well, that's not what this is about uh, there's actually speaking of his references and 
you know, the, he does get um, criticized uh, for being a bit tongue in cheek or a bit smart or a bit. Yes. And then sometimes I can listen to that. You're being a smart ass now, Neil. But there's a lovely little play on the the a philosophical quote from from 10 seconds to midnight, which is um, also on promenade. Obviously, this is the one that really stuck with me because it was the one I listened to the most when I was young. And I think this is what happens when you revisit music. Um, I uh, you just get really sucked into that visceral memory and when you're when I was a teenager the music was so important to me um Mm. anyway but there's this line and it says I think therefore I am a lucky man and it's just lovely you know it's just a nice little play on on the ultimate Descartes quote um and just add you know it's and it's kind of self-deprecating as well you know um but and it's also this is the thing like uh, with his songs like you said they often have quite a sweet uh light vibe where he's he's yeah. talking about something quite heavy and that is quite a very light lyric in a very meditative kind of quite classical mm. kind of sounding mm. song so it kind of lands yeah. a lot more because it sounds yeah. like it's really deep and then you think about it you go i think therefore i am a lucky man you're like oh yeah. he's, he's taking the piss but it's yeah. okay yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. Or sometimes he just gives us like he just gives us a ridiculous scene, right? Yes. You know, um, like you can just imagine. You know, there's this there's this brilliant song where and it starts off and he's kind of pre- and he's pretending to be this like filthy, you know, guy who's like, well, hello, you know, oh no, we have been to a lovely party, you know, all this, and yeah. then it starts talking up, off about a about a woodshed, you know. And like she said, there's nothing in the woodshed, you know. And then you're immediately like, "What's in the woodshed?" Yeah, yeah, <laughs> you know? yeah. Oh, she said there's something don't, in the woodshed. Don't, said don't go to the woodshed. The... Don't go to the woodshed. She's like, no, no, no there's not. Just, 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 you know. And then something in his eyes told, like, you know, something in her eyes, and you can tell there's all this uncertainty between the two of them. Mm-hmm. And then eventually he goes down. And then uh, when he came to, she was gone with all of his money. And you're like, yes. oh, okay, right. <laughs> you know, and it's just a silly kind of, you know, little Actually, story. I, that's a, yeah. something for the weekend. And something I always liked weekend, yeah. that because the whole idea is that she's a bit of a, a, a fool. Like she yeah. says, there's something in the woodshed. I know because I, and he says, I saw it. I can't simply ignore it. And yeah, then yeah, yeah. it's all like him going, oh, there's nothing in the woodshed, baby. You know, it's no biggie. Yeah, yeah. And it's all about this yeah. something in his heart. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Told him to come clean, and but something in his genes told him to pretend. And it's all about he's trying to get the ride, and yeah. he's going to say whatever he can. And then he goes down to the woodshed, and she's got fellas waiting to rob him. And I actually thought, I always thought it was a fun twist that it's like yeah. Leary bloke actually gets yeah. <laughs> gets yeah, his comeuppance. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And and he even stops singing in that. You know, he, you know, he's singing away, and then he goes, and when he came to, she was gone with all of his money. He like it just. Yeah. <laughs> what else did you think was happening here you know yeah. like obviously you know she's not in love with this guy she's not trying to you know impress him or anything it's, she's also not being yeah. duped by him which i think is a lot of fun yep she is the duper not yeah, the duper. It's, yeah. It's a fun thing um yeah. uh okay i think have oh yeah so this is just a very quick one um which i just always thought was fun like this was 95 casanova the album and the mm. album is the album is really horny he's just he's practically a creep in this album well he's casanova and uh but there's this one song called through a long and sleepless night which is a weird kind of it's very adult it's a very uh like this idea it actually feels like um a long and sleepless night and it's mm. kind of there's a line it's four o'clock and all is all's not well in my private circle of hell you know and this and even the guitar is kind of this discord yeah. eh, like this horrible trying to sleep but the chorus of it it's just fun it's it's a nice little it, it was something that wasn't really happening a lot in the 90s but it he just says i can put on the perfume even wear the dress sometimes but i will always be the bridegroom and never the bride and it's just this fun, like yep. maybe someone having a gender um, identity kind of n- night of, mm. you know, and everything's being questioned and, uh, and there's loads in the song, but it keeps going back yeah. and it's all quite incessant. And then it's this really sweet, I can put on the perfume, even, you know, it's yeah. really kind of nice. And but then turns on its head, I'll always be the bridegroom and never the bride and and a nice little nod to stuff that wasn't really being talked about in the 90s around um gender yeah. and things like that but yeah. 
Okay, we're back to you, Stephen. Um, because I I realize I'm totally dominating here. So 2001's The Regeneration. Yes. There's there's a song called Note to Self. It is not his best song by any stretch of the imagination, but it has a fantastic structure. Mm -hmm. Monday, restate my assumptions. Heaven and hell do not exist. Tuesday, restate my assumptions. If you die, you do so at your own risk. Um, Wednesday, restate my assumptions. Beauty is not the same thing as youth. Thursday, restate my assumptions. Only one thing beautiful. That's the truth. Um, Friday, restate my assumptions. The writer writes for himself, not for you. Uh, Saturday, restate my assumptions. The song is not a song until it's listened to. And what's interesting about that is he's combining Nietzsche. So, you know, restate your assumptions. That's that's the whole point of, of all Nietzschean philosophy. And then he, he goes, you know, if you die, you do so at your own risk and all of that. And then at the very end, so what he's doing is he's combining Nietzsche and then Yeats, right? A song is not a song until it's listened to. You know, how can I know the dancer from the dance? It's a really, really literary, mm-hmm. really literary song. Um, and he's and, and I think that's the bit of his stuff that gets the most criticism because it's really like, you know, like if you've read that stuff, you're like, oh yeah, right. Thus makes Zarathustra, ha ha ha. I get it, I get it. But if you don't, you're just like, what the fuck is this fella saying? So yeah, sometimes it can be a bit too. It's a good example of where this is a really smart fella, and he's really trying to kind of give you a a sense of how he's thinking, right? But he's kind of cloaking it in all this very literary. There's a lot of literary superstructure going on there. Um, and I've had a few rows online actually about this precise thing. Um, so, so my a lot of the time when I've read old books, a lot of the time what I'm trying to do with reading these great books is to form an opinion of them for myself. Because uh, I, I resist taking on anyone's opinion because the minute you take someone else's opinion you were forced into ideology of some kind mm. and because you have to believe stuff that just isn't true half the time. So, uh, so what I've done is like, I've read all of Joyce and I've read Yeats and uh, I read the Iliad and the Aeneid. So Homer and they're shite, right? They're shite. And like, and like all my friends, like my friend Neve on Twitter is like, Stephen, you're, <laughs> you're banned. <laughs> You know, <laughs> you've been cancelled cancelled yeah that's all right I, I got that wrong yeah i'm cancelled um, and all this but i've actually read it you know like i, I like it's just the iliad is one long michael bay film it's just literally your man stabbed your man and then your one died and then your man stabbed him again and it's, like, mm. it's all this and um anyway uh all of that is to say that most of what passes for literary uh literary speak is actually middle class gatekeeping. Not I'm accusing my friend Neve of doing that. That's not mm. what I'm saying. Uh, Neve, you know I love you, so I'm not doing that. Uh, my my point is that a lot of it actually is, right? Um, uh, it's it's people who haven't read the books talking about the books, but they don't haven't read the books. They're talking about books that they read about the books, or people that they've heard talking about the books that they haven't read. So it's it's very third and fourth hand knowledge, and it's uh, especially if you come from a working class background. It, what it actually seeks to do is, is is to disqualify you from those conversations. Right. Yeah. yeah. And I've always found, because I am from a working class background, I've always found that um, I've always found that the best way to do things is just to read the bleeding book because they're not that complicated. Yeah. Um, in fact, one of the best thing, one of the, the version of the Aeneid I have has the Latin on the left and the English on the right. And so every so often uh, I'd be reading someone else who has these like little Latin phrases like mirabile dictu, wonderful to say. And what they're doing is saying, motherfucker, I've read the Aeneid. And I'm like, <laughs> oh, oh. And that's sort of what's happening here, right? In, 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 this, in this book, it's like, in this, sorry, in the song, um, he's going, yeah, no, I've read it. I get it. I get it. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, so there, there is, I think there's oftentimes he can be, he can be, um, he can be, a, he can be, I suppose, caricatured as being overly arch, as being mm-hmm. just like he's just read too many books and sticking too many things in. But what I, I, one of his, one of my favorite songs is from Bang Goes the Nighthood, which I think is, I really think it's one of his best albums from 2010. And he's got a great uh, song called Assume the Perpendicular. It's all about class in England. Okay. Um, 
Slip on your barber jacket, jump in your old MG. We're off to the depths of Somerset to see what we can't see, what we can see, see, see. We don't want, we don't want to drink the cider. We don't want to walk for miles. We just want to go to a stately home built in the Georgian style. And then he goes, I can't abide a horizontal life. It's time to rise, you know, pretend like Mrs. Bucket, you know, that you yeah. live in some fancy gaff. Uh, assume the perpendicular, jump up and down, make complimentary sounds and talk about nothing in particular. Oh, get in. That kind of like, you know, uh, I mean, the whole thing is, you know, crunch up the gravel driveway, gasp at the grand facade. Just for today, we're lords and ladies. Oh, what a gay charade. Lavinia loves the lintels. And as the architraves, Ben's impressed by the buttresses, thrusts up the chapel nave. I mean, you know, like he's, it's very difficult to get, you know, you know to have that kind of thing. But it's, it's a satire of social climbers, you know, and, and the kind of like, you you're you're cosplaying being a rich person you know that way like yes of course (laughs) and i love i just love that thing because um you see people you see people here doing it a little bit but it's it's nowhere near as 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 obvious as in the uk of course it's it's not as ingrained in the class system isn't ingrained Uh, here the way it's part of what make what the makeup of the uk um it's it's funny because i remember like obviously Many years have passed, but uh, I remember when uh, his albums were coming out in the 90s and he has a there's a song called Book Lovers where he just lists out uh, writers. And then there's little uh, voices saying things afterwards, like uh, there's a great one, um, Umberto Eco, who's incredibly complex. Sometimes you try to Mm -hmm. read his books and the little phrases, I don't understand this either. And it's just really, (laughs) really fun. Um, But the funny thing is he said, and it's because he's, you know, he's, he's, he's Anglo-Irish. He's the son of a a reverend and um, he he sounds posh as hell, but he he said like, you know, when he's, a lot of people assume he's really well read. And that song was a real, you know, I'm not that, well, back then, like, it's really, I'm not actually that well read. I'm just going to list out all these things and do the pretend thing. And it was yeah. really like, uh, you know, taking the piss out of the, yeah. that exact thing that you're talking about. But at the same time, putting his hands up and he's going like, I'm not listening at all these authors saying I've read them. I'm saying I haven't. <laughs> and it's, you yeah. know, it's a lot of, a lot of fun. Yeah. And um, like there, so I'm just kind of time as usual. Uh, that's my thing. Um, but we're, we're almost at the end. And the thing is we have one that we, we both uh, agree on. And before we get to it, there's one little, I just, I, Neil often gets animals in in a way, and I get the sense he he's an animal lover. And there's a line here from a song called "The Dogs and the Horses," and um, it's a father giving his son advice, and he just says, "So the only thing to feel sad about is all the dogs and the horses you'll have to outlive. They'll be with you when you say goodbye." And it's just like as he said that kind of grabbing something like the only thing in life to feel sad about is outliving your pets and it's very <laughs> it's very glib but it's also when you think about it it's like well there's plenty to be sad about but that is really sad that, yeah. <laughs> that when you've been an animal um but I, it was one of those things when i was listening back over i'd forgotten the song existed and then i went oh, i always saw that line just had a nice little um resonance to it yeah. but you also chose we both chose one song in common but well, before we get to that one song, oh, yeah. we have to shout out to Shane Hickey O'Mara uh, on Twitter. Loads and loads and loads of people uh, uh, sent us um, uh, lyrics and they were all fantastic. But I particularly love this one. Uh, so it's from Shane. And it's, it's from uh, at the Indie Disco. And it says, she makes my heart beat the same way as at the start of Blue Monday. And that's just great. That's just great because the minute you know that song, you're like, yes. oh, wow. <laughs> oh, wow. She is something special, you know. And I've always loved that. I, I always think that there's a way, there's a way in which, it, normally women, in fact, but, but people, people who make you feel a certain way, they are often given a kind of a literary pride of place that you just don't see in other areas. The obvious example is, is um, she was a Sunday in every week, yeah. you know, yeah, yeah. and you're like, <laughs> oh, you know, man. Yeah. Uh, or, 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 um, or Shane McGowan, you're the measure of my dreams. Mm. I mean, you know, these kind of things that those, those 
sorts of um, those sorts of statements about people. You know, you kind of know everything else. You know, and and it's that again that kind of gorgeous compression. Um, yeah. But but yes, but we had we had both kind of agreed um, that, that, that 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 I think this next song is just absolutely yeah. It's there, just, there's, it's, there's so there's so much in it, and I did. Did you pick the entire song, or did you pick it? So the song is "Tonight We Fly," which is the yes. end of of Promenade, the 1994 um, album, I think, or ninety three four. Ninety three, yeah. Um, and did you choose the whole song, or did you choose uh, any part of it in particular? I, I picked the bit which it says, <clears throat> over the mountains, the beach and the sea, over the friends that we've known and those that we now know and those who we've yet to meet. And when we die, will we be that disappointed or sad? If, has, if heaven doesn't exist, what will we have missed? This, li this life is the best we've ever had. I just think that's amazing. There's something incredibly uplifting about that. And actually that whole song is incredibly uplifting. Mm -hmm. um, but what I've what it tells you is you know it tells you that you have you bear a certain responsibility to the present mm -hmm. you know and to yourself as you are and like especially in the early 90s like there's a weird way to say things you know um that that's precisely the era of nirvana and you know, uh, Alanis Morissette not necessarily understanding the word what the word ironic meant and all this kind of stuff, right? It's anger and and uh, you use the word angst, and I think that's fair. Mm. That's what it is, and 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 and, yeah. and, and great in many ways. Yeah, but sure. but there was there was sorry, but I'll let you finish finish your sentence. <laughs> no, but I just I find it um, I find listening back to those tunes now. You know, I'm in my forties now. I was a teenager then, and. I find when I listen back, I can't access that emotion of angst. If anything, if anything, what I feel of that time is mostly anger. To be, if I'm being honest, I feel angry, mm. and um, the the angst bit, the oh god, uh, you know, that always strikes me as being somewhat faux. Maybe I'm just a bit like, oh, okay, right, you know. You're being angsty because it's kind of not cool to have, but let's be honest, it's all going to work out, right? It's all going to work out to, 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 you know, the, the, the perfect example of this is, you know, um, uh, is pulp right so you know she, he, he goes well, pretend you haven't got any money and yeah. she says oh is you're so funny he goes yeah well i don't see anybody else laughing in here yeah, you know yeah. it is that it's 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 sort of you know you'll never live like common people you know you'll never watch your life slide out of you you know and if you called your dad you could stop it all the ability to turn off the sadness in a certain sense yeah um and actually he just jumps way above all of that so pulp is like calling bullshit on all that angsty stuff mm -hmm. and uh never mind the other two muppets but but what he's saying is hang on step up out of this because you've only got one life and i actually think that there's there's just so much in there and again like what age is this fella he's the same age he's in his early 20s when he's writing this stuff I yeah I, and it's 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 actually i'm just showing uh steven there that uh, that's what i picked out which is pretty much the same bit um oh. <laughs> <laughs> which is yeah uh yes. i pretty much picked out the same part of the song and I, I think it's fair to say like there's room there's room for all the things and I, I did find as a teenager i didn't fit in a lot with um even the you know the people i was friends with it like and we're still friends we're great but i remember just feeling i was really I, I was very lucky uh, can I say I was I was very lucky in my in my teenage years and and so this kind of happy sweet <laughs> music and sentiment really really appealed to me more yeah. I, I identified with it more um and that's that's me I'm not saying I was right I'm just saying that's that's the teenager I was so that kind of sentiment um was just so beautiful and I think well we're gonna play uh section we yes. we'll get to play one bit so i think tonight we fly because it is the one that we joined on we'll get we'll get there copyright wise we don't play 30 seconds of it but do treat yourselves and get on to um mr Just mr hannon listen to it all 
it's, it's fun because it. you and I cover different part. Like I we can I was connecting more with the nineties and you were connecting more with the 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 noughties and mm. and more recent stuff, which is really good rather than you and I coming in going, so oh, <laughs> we've all the exact same ideas. <laughs> yeah, no, I think I think when I was a teenager, it for me it was it was metal, you know, it was it was metal. It wasn't it wasn't um it wasn't dance music, it was, you know. Metallica and these kind of bands and it was it was that um actually weirdly one of the like strangely proudest moments uh was when my young fellow was playing like Cowboys from Hell on his guitar and I was like oh, that's my son and my wife was like what is going on that's really strange but yeah it was a weird uh, inversion of time but but uh yeah no that the for him him in particular for for me he's the sound of a particular moment in the late 90s and early 2000s for me. Mm -hmm. And I mm -hmm. think where I really got into him weirdly was through his greatest hits album, which is called oh, yes. The Secret History. Secret History and yeah. um, that, again, super strange, right? Because that version of, if you like, the Divine Comedy is quite different. It's, for, you know, it's like, you know, the National Express. Oh, Jesus, sure, we didn't even mention the biggest tune, you know? Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's a great tune. It's a great tune. It's it's it, a great tune. You know. National Express, it is. I I think I got a bit over Yeah. I was you like, everyone was like, well, everyone was like, oh, what a great song. And I was like, well, that's kind of a fun throwaway one, but he's got way better. You know, the typical annoying person, like, I like his earlier albums. You know what I mean? Like, I was that annoying person. Yeah. But yeah, no, it's great crack. And it has that great line about, there's so many great lines in it too, but yeah. uh, what's this? The the person trying to get past with the arse is the size of a small country yeah is yeah, a, a, yeah. A, a lot of fun <laughs> yeah exactly you know she'll provide you with drinks and theatrical wings for a high a sky high fee um, <laughs> no, what, what i love what i love about all of his music is there is always a chance that you're going to listen to something and you can listen to it one way the first time second way a second time third way third time and by the end of it you're like oh wow okay oh i see where you're going with that and there's there's actually to be honest there's very few people who i listen to like that mm. you know and i would have listened to um particularly the, a lady of a certain age you know it's we're, we're recording this on a monday mm -hmm. uh, i would have listened to i mean conservatively 10 times mm -hmm. and i would have heard it 10 different ways and like i said to you in a little carousel of my mind 10 different people show up yeah and they all for me that access is a certain particular type of memory or maybe a set of memories and i think that's just a brilliant thing about music is that it does that for everyone it does ab know? absolutely and actually if you as we we come to the end if you want to, there's one song i actually don't know what album it's on off the top of my head but it's a ballad it's all one night it's described it's called our mutual friend and it's oh, yeah. just yeah, 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 yeah. I, I that's a song i i can listen to on repeat but it's it's a story it's a ballad it, it tells a story throughout the song and it's beautiful and it touches all the feels but um you're gonna I have think, the feels you're gonna, gonna have, have the feels, feels. and he's a he's a, he's a he's a he's a prick who's who's tongue-in-cheek and he's always taking the piss but sometimes he's a sincere uh, and you we forgot to mention as well lucy oh, which is yes, the words yes. the wordsworth poems put to music yes 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 like it's wordsworth in fact, but in fact uh, which 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 i had forgotten and uh, somebody was like, I was like, these lyrics are great on Twitter. And somebody's like, well, in fairness, it is words worth it. Like, oh, yeah, of course, of course, of course. Um, so why don't we finish off with that? I slumbered, did my spirit seal. I had no human fears. She seemed a thing that could not feel the touch of earthly years. No motion has she now, no force. She neither hears nor sees. Rolled round an earth's diurnal course with rocks and stones and trees. I mean, William, he, he knew what he was doing. And and Neil's tune, I have to actually have one funny little, I know you, oh, you read that beautifully and it was the perfect yeah. ending and I'm ruining it. But oh. fun throwback time, especially for your son and for people who are learning instruments and that. I used to listen to, I was I was playing the guitar since I was um, eight and I play oh. my ear. And I used to, I'd listen to songs. I'm like, yeah, I know what that is. I, I can play that. I can figure that out. Lucy, I was like, I don't know what he's doing. I can't figure that out. I don't know what he's how he's playing that. And 
I remember there was a great show called No Disco, which was on. Yes. Yes. And I, on Thursday nights at about 10 o'clock and it was like yep. you did your homework done and you were staying up late and they, they would always be a kind of um, you know real hard to find music and they had a live uh, they had Neil Hannon on he did a live performance and he played Lucy and I watched him on video and paused it and rewound it paused it and figured out how he was playing this inversion oh, of E up, up on up, up further up the fret and it was such a, a triumph uh figuring out how to play it Brilliant. so that was just a lovely little throw and Lucy's gorgeous it's a bunch of words for poems put together all around this character Lucy mm. very young um so I think we'll uh we'll just we'll play out with a bit of tonight we fly because that yes. was our our joint choice and Stephen what fun and until next month take care Find yourself.